How will Shane Waldron evolve the Chicago Bears running game this season? We'll talk a little bit about that. We're also talk about Montez Sweat saying that he cannot lose to the Green Bay Packers this upcoming year. We're going to get into all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. I'm the host there, Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Shy Bears Central on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into this content for the day. And uh, yeah, we're going to start off with Shane Waldron um, and the Chicago Bears running running attack, right? So a lot of people have questioned how much the Chicago Bears, how, w- how would the run pass balance be? Under Shane Waldron, you can expect us to pass it a lot more than what we did last season, especially under a Luke Getze offense with the new quarterback, things like that. But, you know, people have asked and wondered how potent will that Chicago Bears running game be? Considering that while the Bears have been number one, number two in the, in the last couple of years as far as rushing attack, Justin Fields played a huge role in that. Now, the Chicago Bears did bring in uh, Swift in, to this team, and we know that that kind of he's, he's going to be coming in and expected to have a huge role pairing with Khalil Herbert and Roshan Johnson. And I think that's a sign that the Chicago Bears run game is going to be in good hands, and they still have big plans to still use that run game very heavily for the Chicago Bears. And, you know, regardless of what they do in other areas, things like that, uh, you know, even if they do get a wide receiver in this draft, which most of us are hoping and wanting, and seems every day like that could be a possibility for the Bears if they don't trade down. But you got to look at Shane Waldron and his history as an offensive coordinator and how he uses the running game. Um, So, you know, when Shane Waldron came in to the Seattle Seahawks, uh, when he took over, the Seahawks had a run-pass balance of 358 times running in that season. 300, uh, 563 times passing. Now, that does not include, um, no, I'm sorry, that rushing includes playing runs and uh, playing runs by the quarterback, but not scrambles by the quarterback. In his first season with that, uh, they had a rushing total of 386 minus scrambles uh, that therefore, and, and pass, the passes dropped by 68 to 495. In subsequent years, that number still went up. In 2022, they ran the ball 392 times, and in 2003, they ran it 401 times. What does that mean? It means that Shane Waldron is a, a offensive coordinator that does not get stagnant, that does get creative, and still does plan on using that running game very heavily. And that's why you saw the Chicago Bears go out and get a DeAndre Swift. So I think that's going to be an important part of this. And so when you look at also Shane Waldron and the way that he's developed as a play caller um, over his career uh, as an offensive coordinator, the Bears are going to get the benefit of him going through what he's already went through at different spots, coming in with kind of a more streamlined approach and how he wants to go about things. And the thing is, I expect the Chicago Bears to still have a damn good running attack. Are they going to look like may- and maybe run it as much as they had, you know, in 2022? Probably not. And they shouldn't either right especially if you have a quarterback that's operating more within the pocket we're going to be under center a lot more too but the running game is in good hands they're gonna there's gonna be really good balance between that run game and the pass game even with the bears potentially adding another uh, weapon in in a a, a wide receiver potentially in this draft so when you look at it that running back room right is going to be important for the chicago bears and hopefully they're able to stay healthy as well Look at DeAndre Swift and what he can do at both in in the run and the pass game. Khalil Herbert, what he does in the running game, and looking a little bit better than what I expect him to look in the pass game as well. And then you still got Roshan Johnson still as your kind of do-it-all back, uh, who still has a lot to prove of how much he can be a weapon for the Chicago Bears team consistently, right? Because we know he had the injury, things like that. But the number of snaps went up for him as the season went along as well. So I do think that, you know, the Bears still have faith in Roshan Johnson, but he's going to have to earn those snaps. And, you know, when it comes down to it, having the running back room that we have and the talent and the weapons that we have there, and overall this offense is in a really good place right now. Yes, we still officially need to draft a quarterback, which the Chicago Bears could potentially uh, sign Caleb Williams at any point in time if they want to just eliminate all those questions. But, you know, I think that the offense that we have coming into the season for the Chicago Bears is going to be an offense that, I don't know if we've ever really seen it as far as how versatile it's going to be for the Chicago Bears. Now, that's on paper. It's up to Shane Waldron. It's up to the offensive coaching staff to develop this the quarterback that's coming in as well as use the weapons that we have. Ryan Poles did his job with getting the weapons here on that offense, getting in the new staff. A lot of the staff who have, you know, co- uh, have, have been together under different coaches' staffs as well. But, you know, it's it, 
how this offense comes together is really going to be the thing that I think we're going to see stages of over the course of the season. The defense, I think, is going to probably hit the ground running, and maybe even that could, could be a little bit of a curve depending on what we do at the edge if we do something in the draft. But I think the defense is kind of the, more, the thing that you expect to be to be good to start off with, right? The offense, especially with a rookie quarterback, can take some time to go. If you guys watched my video yesterday, you know I've already kind of got on people. Like, the expectations for a rookie quarterback, I understand why they're there, but he's still going to have time to be that rookie quarterback. Um, but we got more than enough here. And how that how that that balance changes over the course, because I could see us still being a very run-heavy team to at least start the season, allowing that time to acclimate for, Cal for Caleb Williams. Um, but as it goes on and it becomes a, bo a bit of a more balanced offense and Caleb shows that he's ready for something, he could do that in training camp. We could, su could see that run-pass balance be more pass-heavy right right away. But, you know, I, I expect it to be an evolution for the Bears' offense as these players get familiar. we got a lot of new weapons on this offensive side of the ball. The offensive line even has some new faces there. But when you look at Gerald Everett, new face. Uh, DeAndre Swift, new face. Keenan Allen, new new face. Now, it does benefit that a lot of these guys are also veterans that have been in the NFL for a while as well. So hopefully that learning curve, a lot of these those guys also are familiar with the system. But uh, the Bears offense is going to be kind of where all eyes are on, especially from the national media, considering we moved on from Justin Fields and have a new quarterback coming in and about that new quarterback as well. But there's been a lot to be made about Caleb Williams. And, you know, Caleb Williams actually who clapped back on somebody on Twitter uh, the other day, which I love to see, right? Uh, just just to have that spiciness a little bit, right? Well, maybe spiciness isn't the right word there. But you guys know what I mean. But with that said, you know, there's been some questions over, uh, well, you know, is Caleb Williams a diva? And the Chicago Bears apparently, and this one uh, comes from Bears Wire, have no worries or concern about who and what Caleb Williams could be that they don't think. Police reports Jordan Schultz also saying that he was present. He was not a diva at all. He knew everyone's name. He he was just over uh, the over the top impressive in his meeting with the Chicago Bears and Chicago Bears uh, players. So that's an important thing. We've talked a lot about how it's going to look for Caleb Williams to win this locker room over. And outside of the the talk, the confidence, anything like that, it's going to have to come down to Caleb Williams and the and the rapport that he builds with the with the teammates. And this is Chicago, right? This is a Chicago Bears franchise. As long as he comes in with the right mindset and performs, especially in practice, goes through the ups and downs, things like that, it's going to be hugely important for uh for for that to be a huge step in him kind of winning these guys over. And make no mistake about it, he's going to have to win the guys over, especially for a locker room that love Justin Fields. Now, by win them over, I don't mean that they're going to hate Justin or try to uh, just, uh, tank his success or anything like that, but for them to trust him, right? He is going to have to earn that trust from those players that went through battles with Justin, that went through the uh, the down seasons with Justin, right? Went through those things, the injuries and things like that. Saw how Justin battled and 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 set the tone in practice by coming to Hallis Hall, reporting there early and stuff like that. Not to say that Caleb Williams has to do those same exact things, but he does have to endear himself to the Chicago Bears uh, roster. And so we'll see what happens with that. But the Bears have done more than enough due diligence on Caleb Williams. If Caleb Williams is picked, which all signs are pointing to, on April 25th, Caleb Williams will officially be the new quarterback of the Chicago Bears. It's because the Bears have done every bit of the research possible to where they're not only sure of what he's going to bring on the football field, but they're also sure of the character and the person in, in who Caleb Williams is. And so I get it. A lot of people have doubt. And some people have doubt about some different narrative things with Caleb Williams. I've talked about that ad nauseum. I'm not really giving any more energy to that either. Uh, but it's up to Caleb to come in here and prove it. And, you know, that's this this offense and what they're going to go through. But he's coming in and inheriting a situation that has been tailor-made to try to put him in the best situation that it can be for him to succeed. And, you know, it's up to the coaching staff. It's up to Ryan Poles to continue to evolve it, to watch how things go, the ebbs and flows. But it's also up to Caleb Williams to come in and own it. And if he does, see what happens with that one, man. But. I want to talk about a little bit about the comments from Montez Sweat when it came to the Green Bay Packers. The Green Bay Packers, by the way, who we do know now uh, that they will not be facing off against the Chicago Bears, at least not to open the season. They'll be opening their season uh, differently. I think they're opening it on Friday night, and they're going to be uh, out on the uh, traveling. They're going to be in San Paulo, Brazil, to open the season on September 6th against the Philadelphia Eagles. So shout out to those two teams that get to play in Brazil. That, that could be huge. But in Montez Sweat talking about like what he said about Caleb Williams, which I did talk about, saying this, I'm not losing to Green Bay this year. I can't do it. I can't do it, man. Um, so he was on the green light with Chris Long uh, on that YouTube channel when he said that. 
And this is a big season for the Bears to get over that hump, right? They're not just the Green Bay Packers. We all know it's FGB all day, every day around here at Chicago Bears Central. But you also have to in your division. And this division, the NFC North, is a division that's on the rise. It's going to be one of the more interesting um, divisions in the game of football this upcoming year to just see how everything shakes out. And the Bears are the team that have to prove it, right? The Detroit Lions won that division last year. They show what they can be. The Vikings have some cha- a lot of changes going on with that team, so they got things that they need to prove also. But even if you're going off last season's record, they don't have as much proved as the Chicago Bears. But again, the changes on that roster kind of kind of show that they got a lot to prove as well, um, as where as well down there. So this is going to be a division that's going to be really fun to watch how things shake out, and the Bears are going to have to fight to show that they belong in that division. And I, for one, don't see nothing wrrong with that. They're, like I get it, we're Bears fans. We want to say it when you look at the Vikings, the Lions, the Green Bay Packers, and the Chicago Bears. Right now, based off where last season ended, if you remove the fandom, like, of course, I looked at the way my defense finished that season, the the wins over the Detroit Lions and things like that, but the Bears are going to have to prove it, and this is going to be a division where nothing's given. Everybody's looking to set the tone in the division, and Montez Sweat putting those words, you got to also put the action behind it. Jaquan Brisker is a player who also talked a lot about the Green Bay Packer rivalry and didn't necessarily always perform the wellest in those games. Now, if we're going to be talking, that's fine. I'm not against talking, especially trash talking, the Green Bay Packers or anybody else in the North, but you're going to have to back it up on the football field because nobody's giving the Chicago Bears anything. And while the Bears and some of these odds are now kind of predicted to have an above 500 record, shout out to that, they got to prove it on the football field. So if you're talking about showing your worth and showing where you rank in the NFC North, it's going to have to be proven every any, any given Sunday on the football field. I love for players to talk. I love for players to sound confident. I love for Montez Sweat to already have that mindset of he doesn't want to lose to the Packers because he knows what it means to the city of Chicago, but you got to prove it, and we have to prove it as a team. That's on Eberflus. That's on the coaching staff overall. That's on Ryan Poles to put a roster out there that can beat him. Yeah, beat Green Bay is, is, is a vibe that everybody in Chicago is going to want to see and they're going to feel, and you're going to get everybody rah rah up about it. But if you show it on the football field, that's the most important thing. Show it on the football field. That's what we need to do. We can talk shit to the Green Bay Packers all day. They're cheeseheads. They live in Wisconsin. It is what it is. But you got to show it. And this is going to be a year to really see how we measure not only in the NFC overall, but specifically in our division. We need to start getting those divisional wins. We need to start showing that we can we can match wits with these other teams in our division that also are on the rise and on the way up. And they're, like I said, they ain't trying to give the Chicago Bears a goddamn thing. So you have that. And, uh, I, you know, I know I've said before, you can win the division technically without beating Green Bay. But how much sweeter would it be to beat Green Bay on the way to that, right? Break that curse. I'm tired of Matt Eberflus hasn't beat Green Bay yet. Let's get a win over Green Bay, but let's do so by also becoming a team that's winning other games as well. Yes, I want to beat Green Bay as about as bad as anybody else, but if you beat Green Bay and you lose to everybody else in the division, what have you really proved other than a moral victory against our historic rivals, which hasn't really been a rivalry for so long? So if we're going to put Jordan Love and the Green Bay Packers on notice, we're going to have to do it on the football field because talk is only, it only gets you so far, right? So that's something that I really want to see for the Bears is just how they measure in the division in this upcoming year, but also in the NFC overall, in the conference overall. We got to we got we got to play well and we want to see this team be able to at least get a wild card spot to be fighting for a postseason to be contending for something. And this is the year that we have to prove it. So, you know, we'll see what happens with the Chicago Bears, man. And um, ultimately, I think that we're moving in, into a place where our offense and defense both are on the, are on the uprise. Right. But they got to prove it. And that's really what it comes down to. And like, just like I said with Ryan Pohl so many times, like you could do things that I don't necessarily agree with, but if they work out. And one of those things that shows if things work out, it just comes down to how do you how do you measure up in your conference? How do you measure up in your division? How do you measure up against these other teams that have these young quarterbacks or these young cores that are on the rise while the Chicago Bears have kind of been spinning their wheels? Yeah, we doubled our wins from, from 2020 to 2023. 2020, 2022 to 2023, which is all great. It's all fine and dandy, but we really didn't contend to compete for much. Let let this be a meaningful season for the Chicago Bears, both in the growth and development of a young new quarterback or any new young players that come into this team, but also uh, an important season in the fact that we're actually competing for something, right? That the end of the season matters more. That the end of the season matters more than us just saying, hey, what's that draft pick looking like? 
That's what I would love to see from the Chicago Bears this season. And hopefully this is the year that we get that. Let's hope so, guys. But make sure you guys are following the show at Shy Bears Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns. Chicago Bears Central gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the mailbag, the number to do so, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. And like I liked in every episode on Shy Town Up, but bear down. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Media.